What's up YouTube, Eric Vasquez here from Teach Me To Design. And in today's video, I wanna have a little heart to heart with you so that we can talk about art direction. Now, if you're anything like me and you work for an in-house company or you've worked in-house for years, you'll know that when you're starting off as an entry-level designer, you sort of have to work your way up to a junior designer, a senior designer, then an art director, and then maybe a creative director or a design director and so forth. This is the exact path that I've followed throughout my own career ever since I graduated college and started designing in around 2006. And 2006, holy shit. Anyway, what I want to talk to you about are the three skills that you absolutely must have if you want to get to that next level in your career and become an art director. Number one, the first thing that you absolutely must do is start thinking in terms of campaigns instead of just one-off designs. For example, if you were to just create a poster or a logo, in your mind, you might think that that will just sort of stand alone by itself. But we need to start thinking in terms of overall look and feel. And in order to do that, we can't just look at each piece in this little individual way. We have to think about design in terms of a bigger campaign that spans across print, digital, and on air. A good way to think about this is, let's say you've created a piece of key art or a poster, and you're using certain colors, certain fonts, maybe there's textures that you're using on the poster, or any type of visual treatment on the images. These are sort of like the brand elements that you will want to carry across all of the other mediums. So that can include ads, signage, billboards, magazines, newspapers, posters, you name it. And it even spans across to on air. So the way that something looks and feels on TV, on the big screen, has to tie in together so that everything feels cohesive. So you're not gonna use a totally different set of fonts or colors in one place from the other. That's skill number one. Skill number two that you absolutely must have if you're looking to become an art director is the ability to receive and give helpful, constructive, creative feedback. And the reason I say helpful, constructive, creative feedback is because the purpose of giving feedback should be to help somebody learn or grow. It's not just a matter of saying, I don't like that, that doesn't work. Instead, you have to be able to approach it in a way that can help somebody understand what the goal is, right? Because at the end of the day, you probably have some people that you have to answer to who may be higher up in the chain. Sometimes they're creative, sometimes they're not. But a lot of times there are certain goals or objectives that need to be achieved in a piece of creative. So when it comes to feedback, it's important to be able to not take it personally, to keep an open mind, be collaborative, and ask lots of questions. Now, on the other side of it, if you wanna become an art director, you also have to be able to articulate to another designer, a freelancer, or a team what those goals are that you're trying to achieve. And in doing so, this will help you build your confidence. So it's a really important skill to develop. And that is skill number two. Now, the third skill that you need to develop in order to become a professional art director is to be good about managing your time, right? So time management is something that I've struggled with a lot. And a big part of the reason for that is because I love rolling up my sleeves and doing the hands-on creative work. But sometimes the hours go by and you realize, holy cow, I've spent a ton of time working on this and I have to get on to the next thing. So what do you do when you need to make sure that projects keep moving along in order to hit your deadlines? The few of the things that have really helped me a lot are things like setting a timer on my phone, right? I'll give myself, say, a two hour block of time to just focus on doing deep work. And sometimes I'll even block this out on my calendar so that I can minimize distractions and disruptions so that I can just focus on the creative. Another thing that I will do is use a piece of software like Notion. And this video isn't sponsored by Notion, by the way. But I'll use Notion a lot because it will help me keep track of my projects. I can say what the status is, where we are in the pipeline, and what the next steps are for a project. So that way, I can remind myself of what needs to be done. And the third thing that you can do to help yourself manage time is to schedule your emails, right? So whether you're using Outlook, Gmail, whatever it is, in most pieces of email software, you can schedule it to send a little bit later. So if I have a PDF or a project that I'm ready to share with a client, but I need a little bit more time, I will schedule it for maybe an hour, two hours in advance. So that way I can just keep working, start on the next project, 
and have the peace of mind that that project will be sent to the client when it's supposed to. Now, these are the three biggest skills that you really need to develop and have an awareness of if you want to become a professional art director. So I wanted to share some of these things with you because these are the exact same skills that I had to learn on the job in order to go from becoming a senior designer to an art director and advancing in my professional career. So I hope that these tips have been helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them below. And if you did like the video, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Eric Vasquez here for Teach Me to Design, and we'll see you next time.